Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and an algorithm brought you to this video. Another algorithm chose the route that avoids construction on your way to work this morning. Yet another hiring algorithm is the reason you have a job to go to in the first place. Setting aside that you may now lose said job for watching said video at work, we'll get to much worse consequences at the end. And for now, what are these algorithms? We speak of them as malevolent phantoms or benevolent spirits, but they're really just a series of instructions for solving a problem. If you liked a motorcycle last week and watched that Quentin Tarantino interview, then YouTube suggests this. If A is the shortest route, then maps suggest A. Unless there's traffic on A, then it suggests B. Unless there's traffic on B, then it reverts to A. Algorithms are not complicated, they're just convoluted. A very long series of if-then statements. And what that enables is for an unthinking machine like a computer to solve a nuanced problem. Or for an unthinking ball of hormones, like my 14-year-old self, to solve Rubik's Cube. Never mind that I have no real understanding of how to solve Rubik's Cube, simply memorizing the if-then algorithms will solve it. Of course, this solution is not the one that my 14-year-old self was really hoping for. What I hoped for was that girls would like me. Bummer. My first foray into algorithms didn't really deliver. But today, I realized that the distance between those two solutions, what was asked for versus what was longed for, is important. And that's the measure of how badly algorithms are screwing everything up in 2025. To warm up, let's ride through the most foundational algorithm. This is Dijkstra's algorithm for finding the shortest path between any two points. It goes like this. You take each path from the starting point and label each vertice with the distance to get there. Once that's done, you go to the smallest number and ride each path from there, labeling the new total if it's the smallest one and throwing it out if there's already a shorter solution. Again, from the lowest number, again, I ride each path. Yep, that is shorter. Nope, that's worse. Yes, that's better again. And thus, bing, a problem like Google Maps can find the quickest route between any two points. But there's an inherent problem with algorithms like Dijkstra's. They're greedy. And I don't just mean that they're employed by greedy corporations to manipulate consumer behavior, though that is true. And I don't just mean that they're increasingly used by AI bros to 10x their productivity without doing any inventive work, though that is also true. And what I mean is that they're mathematically known as greedy algorithms or short-sighted algorithms because they will take the most locally optimal path at every stage. Now say my goal is to get closer to the camera. Well, I could step here or here. This is better. Then I could step here or here. Well, this is better. But from here, I can only go this way and this way, both of which are worse. So the greedy algorithm would say, problem solved. A human, however, has the capacity to be less greedy, to make a short-term sacrifice because it ultimately allows for a better result. Mathematically, we say greedy algorithms will often find the most locally optimal solution at the cost of missing a more globally optimal solution. Poetically, you could say that the code can never hope that something better exists. It's a bit like the algorithm that solves the cube and is content, whereas the boy doesn't get any dates and still hopes for something entirely better. Not mere attention, but connection. Now, small and petty, though my example seems, it actually explains why YouTube is getting so samesy. Its algorithm takes what you like and what people like you like and suggests more of the same. But since it's using the ifs to determine the thens, it cannot imagine anything outside of its closed loop, its closed mind. A human might make something illogical, knowing that you'll hate it but may eventually develop a taste. A human could subscribe to something morally worthwhile, though very hard and probably unpopular to watch. But the algorithm doesn't care what you hope to see. It only shows you what maximally addicts you to the platform right now. And this is where things get a little bit dark. See, I can lose four hours watching YouTube without realizing, but also without really remembering or appreciating anything that I've seen. And the rabbit hole goes a little bit deeper still. See, since the algorithm is solving for attention now, rather than connection later, that just keeps happening over and over again. 
And early on, the algorithm was written by real people and it was real simple. In 2007, it was, if you watch motorcycles, suggest bicycles. If you watch news in the morning, suggest comedy in the evening. But in 2025, we've opened the door to thousands of what they call interest signals. Never mind what you like. The stuff you like, who else likes it, and what else do they watch, and how long are they scrolling for, and how long do they pause, and the people who they share it with, who do they share it with, and who's the most influential person in that group, and well, what do they subscribe to, and what about their purchase history, and how does that cross-reference with their search history, and you get the problem. Just coding an algorithm for Ryan this Saturday would take 10 computer scientists 10 years to do. So, naturally, it's all done by machine learning today, using time on platform as the ultimate goal, and AI only knows what web of logic to get there. Now well, this then is the scariest precipice of all, because what this enables is something called hive mining. The algorithm can search the behavior of millions of grouped people to find the most compelling, the most sensational content, and serve that to each little bee. It makes for an incredibly addictive home feed, but it also tends to make us more similar and more sensationalized since we're sharing these little silos of the most sensational content. You probably know some dudes who cold plunge and love Shane Gillis and are considering a carnivore diet. You probably know chicks who attend evangelical churches and drink from big cups and hawk essential oils. And none of these things have anything to do with each other except for that none of them are locally, organically grown sets of passions. So that's what an algorithm is. It's a complex series of instructions to spit out a single solution. And that's what an algorithm does. It takes complex people and makes them more singular, thus more different from everyone else. We are more boring and more annoying because of algorithms. Were you expecting some kind of solution to the internet? posted within the internet. I am strolling alone, just minding my business, humming a song. I'm happy by myself, not a care in the world. This is a life, just me, myself, and I. I am watching the clouds, up in the sky, but laughing out loud I'm telling you why I'm living the life Just me, myself, and I I used to think that life was cold and lonely When you up and left me Sadness overwhelming out and about painting the town red I'm coming around there ain't no doubt about it I'm no longer blue so glad we are through just me myself and 